when I talked about the place when we walked through at Old Town, I did say that it must be on Friday nights and or in case this case Saturday nights it must get really busy. Well, it does. Um, this is Checkers. We decided to run up and get a little snack, and this place is packed. And it was packed yesterday like this too. Um, I mean, they have got a lot going on here, and there's a lot of people here. They've got the sheriff here. They got lanes blocked off. They've got um, cars being towed. Everything. So definitely um, come in the middle of the week if you're kind of like us and just want to explore the place. And then uh, if you're wanting to do all the rides and be part of the the festivities, um, you want to come up, of course, on the weekend and see what it's all about. What have you been up to? I've been. Riding on a daydream. Yeah, you can see this joint is packed. Nothing like the other day. I mean, there are cars everywhere. There's people everywhere. Heck, they got valet parking. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. We got a valet mode on our car. We should try it one time. But yeah, place is packed. They've got all the rides going. Everybody's doing their thing tonight. Yeah, okay, another call out. You guys know I love doing these and I got people to get upset about it. Hey, I gotta work on my stuff too. But I'm not working on my Harley with aftermarket pipes. I'm not running it and running it and running it and revving it and running it and tuning it. It would be one thing if he's just changing his oil. It's a whole nother thing that just sit there and let it run and rev it up and stuff and not know what the problem is. Listen, this ain't a, a garage. This isn't the place to do this. It's ridiculous. Nobody wants to hear that. What's today? Day before moving. We're going to run over to Tampa area briefly. Um, we have a, uh, a repair that we are going to have the dealership take a peek at on the RV. It's a simple repair. It's under warranty. Rockwood's really good about that stuff. Basically what that means is we're leaving uh, the Kissimmee area. We're driving about an hour over to Tampa area. We'll be there for most of the day. Uh, we'll probably do an overnighter thing so we can, because our appointment's early in the morning and the last thing I want to do is travel I-4 during rush hour. Okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave uh, at night, uh, tomorrow night, is that correct? Tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon, sorry. Well, there, I mean, we could do tomorrow night, but we yeah. not find a place to stay. Right, right. Yeah, we need to make sure we get into uh, a rest area. About four this is a tough, so. I'll tell you, if you don't have reservations or something, mm -hmm. this is probably one of the toughest areas that we've been uh, struggling with. Just uh, an overnight, even. Now, we could do it for, for to pay. We could pay, um, but we, we're trying... Oh, even some of those, though, that yeah. we called. Yeah, that's actually. true. But it, it it's it's tight. It's tough. I mean, I it's just to have a one night one hitter. It's because it's Florida winter. Yeah, Florida winter. It has been the peak Everybody's. of Florida winter, and and I'll tell you what. Out of all the locations we've been in, Orlando is by far the hardest yeah. to get into. Well, because you have snowbirds. Yeah. Us full timers. People uh, living here, vacationers. People, vacation, vacationers going to Disney. Yes. This, this area. Oh, my. I mean, this park is packed. Yep. Uh, I don't even recall actually seeing an empty spot. Because actually when somebody leaves, yeah. somebody else pulls in. Yep. So, in the last park that we were at, she also said the whole month of February she was booked. Yeah, so. She didn't even have take one that, overnight. Take that for what it's worth. You have to be prepared if you want to do winter in Florida. Well, I won't say that. You don't. I don't think you have to be as prepared as, like I said, if you go and, and try to find a site for the entire winter season, that's one thing. But if you're looking to move around and go park to park and you're in the Orlando area, it, it's going to be tough. Well, it's we have actually reservations <coughs> up until May. Yeah. So um, we're lucky and 
we have uh, like a week that we want to switch around and uh, slowly but surely we are getting it straightened out it's kind of crooked right now where we have to move multiple times um, but we have reservations now part of that is because of us and us making accommodations for doctor's appointments and stuff but yeah. again I'm gonna to refer to the links in the description at the bottom of the video down in the description um, thousand trails it works every you know yes it has its quirks everybody it's it, it's, affordable way to it is definitely time. we could not do this if it wasn't for thousand trails right I mean it's there's just no way around it it's the easiest cheapest way for us to do this um, you know like I said going on three years and the funny part is is we paid a lot we paid for a lot of campgrounds that we stayed at and we would have been so much further ahead if we would have just stayed in the thousand trail yeah. system it was there it was available we just chose not to we chose to and the other thing is is trying to find the parks that are real gems ones that you want to go back to and nobody's going to talk about them because they right. don't want anybody you know they don't want right. a video on youtube saying yeah. the best encore park that's out there because then everybody's going to try to reserve it i'm going to say it it's the i think it's this one yeah i think we're at um kissimmee we're at tropical palms mm -hmm. and this is one of the best parks by far that we've been in it's and not too noisy activities yep there's a lot of amenities yep there's a lot of stuff outside the park if you don't want to do that because we're kind of like when that. we say outside the park we're talking about <laughs> hey let's go walk up and get ice cream and you've got to walk what a mile yeah if that just yeah Half and a mile. just walk up you got, old and town. you got old town and i mean it is entertainment every yeah. night if you want to do that so, i mean you know when you think of this area you think of disney well, there's a lot of free stuff to do, yep. um, like even here at the park. Well, we see a lot of people that during the day, they all get in their cars and they all leave. Yep. And I'm telling you, there's so much to do here. You could stay the entire winter and probably do one third the things that are yeah. available here if you actually I mean, explore everything. Could maybe even drive to the beach. Oh, well, that's a long stretch. Well, but you could if, if you don't have reservations near the beach and you want to go to the beach yeah you could it's a i mean we wouldn't we're, do it, we're in the middle of florida <laughs> i don't want to I want to go to the beach but we're too far yeah it's way too far <laughs> so i want you to be aware that the next video that you see is us probably hooking up and heading out remember put your stove top down before you travel <laughs> yeah put your refrigerator on gas yeah put the refrigerator on gas now uh, a couple couple hints for you guys that have rockwoods that have the same setup as we do uh, which is solar with an inverter um, if I put this on automatic to where it chooses between gas or electric uh, what that does is run on electric because I have the inverter turned on uh, until your batteries go low enough that they shut down and then it will switch over to gas of course we don't want the batteries to run down you know everybody's got mixed opinions about that I still have mixed opinions about that believe it or not uh, you shouldn't drive down the road with your propane turned on and your propane appliance is running that's all there is to that however how many times do you want to replace your groceries <laughs> yeah it's I mean it's just one of those things that you got to deal with that's why these 12 volt compressor refrigerators are becoming so popular and I agree a hundred percent anyways getting back to what I was saying is uh, definitely set it on gas so you can run on propane if you're trying to run on propane because if you put it on automatic and think oh great you know whenever I disconnect from the power pole outside it'll switch over to gas automatically it does not do that because it will run on the battery uh, on the inverter and talking with Anthony uh, Yoder out at um, Rockwood the last time I asked him about that, he said that these refrigerators, you only get about 18 hours on battery power uh, before the batteries are depleted. And what he's talking about is two deep cycle lead acid batteries uh, that are roughly 100 amp hour each. So that's the first tip. Uh, the second thing is, is if you guys, and this goes for any RV, if you guys have slides and those slides cover up doors or drawers or anything like that for example this slide that I'm looking at when this slide is in it is covering up that pantry 
Now we have stuff in this pantry that is secure but you never know what's going to happen and it could be that something falls down and knocks that door open and then when you go to put your slide out you don't see it and you could break it you know whenever these slides in it's not like it is now where we can walk around and look at everything so we leave our windows open that's basically the hint I'm getting to we leave that window open we leave this window open so before we put out the slide we can look through the two windows and we can see if that door has come open so we're heading out uh, we don't know where we're going to go we have no idea where we're staying the night tonight um, sometimes that's fun I don't think it's going to be so much fun because of being in Orlando Orlando area um, the Tampa area Walmart's zero there these Walmart's do not let you stay the night they you won't see Walmart livers and, and I'll tell you why it's because of how many homeless is in the area it would be nothing for three homeless guys to go give blood for two months and get enough money to buy an abandoned no title eight hundred dollar travel trailer and get it towed into Walmart and live in it until Walmart has to evict them so it's yeah, I understand why they do it I mean it I I'm glad that they do that for that aspect the Cracker Barrels are kinda tight here our problem is always the same if we stay at Cracker Barrel we have to and this I'll have to say this is definitely a downfall to this step the step situation wherever we stay we have to make sure that our step has uh, clearance for cars you know I can't put I can't pull into a parking space that has three spots and we get in the middle spot and then somebody's pulling in and out of let's say the first spot that is on this campsite of our RV because our steps could potentially be over the line that identifies the lots one from each other and of course they would have the complete right to then hit our stuff because we got it over in their side well, we couldn't be on the end because our steps wouldn't go down so our best case scenario is whenever we pull into a place we want to put we want to put our campsite up against uh, something that's not a, a parking spot so we choose a parking spot that's always against the edge of the property or the edge of an island or the end of uh, an island uh, or a parking area like a truck stop we have to park in an end spot that there is no way anybody could park on the you know the other or side of it us. so or hit us right so here's the thing with that when we use cracker barrels they always have curbs and islands and those curbs don't allow our steps to drop far enough for us to actually put them out and leave them out so there's another problem there we can only get so close to the curb uh, because it can't go up on the curb so there is a downfall to that and there's ways to work around it and we have I mean quite honestly I'm complaining about this and you know we've been doing this for three years it's not like that you know this is a big if it issue work for us we just moved down the road yeah no big and, deal you know, sometimes one time we had all intentions on staying at a Cracker Barrel but when we got there it, yep. was kind of, it was a little on the crowded side and the spot that we had was on the curb and it, it just wasn't gonna work for us yeah oh, it, obviously it wouldn't even work for our travel trailer yeah we don't drive until we're so dead tired that we're like oh my god I can't go any other place you this is to, horrible you have to stop early anyway yeah just stop early leave a little earlier and stop earlier um, we prefer not to stay in truck stops however we have stayed in plenty of truck stops be advised that when you stop at the truck stops uh, you're gonna catch flack no matter what you do um, we have been talk to passive aggressively about how uh, this is coming from a trucker uh, this trucker lady when we were walking out to our spot that we paid for and reserved based on what the pilot told us to do it's not like we said hey we're reserving a spot we want this we said we're in an RV do you have RV parking they said no that you get on you get in with the truck you know the trucks and I said is there any way that we can make sure that we have a spot at some point she goes you can reserve a spot 
And I'm thinking, okay, maybe that would appease some of these drivers that are coming in that want these free spots, and here we're taking one up. So we paid for a reservation, which is almost as much as staying at some campsites. It was 20 bucks. We've, we've paid $20 for campsites before, and, and less. We've paid $10 for campsites. So we were walking back to the truck uh, from the inside. We was getting, doing another little snack run, I'm sure. And this lady said, oh, is that you? I'm like, yeah. And she then said in a manner that was, again, passive aggressive, um, meaning she didn't want to be mean about it, but she wanted to be mean about it. And she said, yeah, I just can't stand it because, you know, I don't have a place to park for the night. And, you know, I'm on a driver's log and I have no place to stop. So now I'm screwed because I'm running out of hours. And I don't have a parking spot. It's funny that she would say that because we didn't take the last spot. Yeah, there was plenty. She didn't want to pay for it. She didn't want to pay. There was other reserved <laughs> spots there. She just didn't, a lot of the truck drivers don't want to pay. Which was the oddest thing that she was complaining about not having spots. And there wasn't. There wasn't any free spots. Now, we've seen a couple other RVs throughout the, the yeah. truck stop. But again, you got to remember that this is us not really having an option but to stay where we were staying. Unless we drove 20, 30 miles in or off of the expressway into a city, into a county, whatever, yeah. and then paying 35 to $75 for an evening and overnight stay. Uh, so we called, and well, I mean, these are the, this is what the company recommended. So I know what electronic logs are. I know what e-logs are. I understand how they work. I understand it's all self-governed uh, by the company and by electronics, and these drivers are stuck. And I 100% agree with what they're saying. I used to work for FedEx Custom Critical. I was a dispatcher. I was also a driver trainer. I was I trained them on how to do their logs and stuff like that back when you had to draw the blocks and all that stuff. Um, I understand what they're going through, and I, I can completely sympathize and almost empathize because of us being on the road ourselves of what they're going through. The problem is, is you don't complain to RVers that are out there. 90% of the RVers don't want to be in a truck stop. They just happen to stop in a truck stop because it works for them and it's convenient for them. 90% of those RVers that are going in there are trying to be courteous and call ahead of time and ask where RV parking is on the lot. There's been plenty of times we've been told, hey, just go back and park with the truckers. And we've said, hey, can we park up front in the corner? You know, we see a spot that we can, especially loves in Lee, Florida. Yeah. We always have this one corner that we go stay at. And even though they're telling us to go back with the truckers, that's what we do because we know we want to get out of your guys' way. Um, and remember, all our veers are not on vacation. It's not like we are just traveling willy-nilly and, you know, we've got places that we need to be. Um, usually we can move at a more leisurely pace, but nonetheless, it doesn't mean that we want to get off the expressway when we're on a thousand mile trip and have to drive 40 or 50 miles off the route to find a place to stay for the night that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and then drive that 50 miles to get back to the expressway the next morning. So I understand the truckers, all you truckers, all you guys that are watching this right now that are drivers and you have a problem with these parking spaces, talk to the people that make a difference. Don't bitch at the driver or the RV people that are in the parking lot. You need to talk to the truck stops. You, if you go to pilot, if, you're, if you have a pilot card, if your company card, your corporate card, your comm card, whatever, is something to do with the Love's Gas Station or Flying J or uh, Travel of uh, Travel Stops of America or whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, TA. Any of those. I mean, and you're not finding parking spaces? Have your company be your ombudsman and talk with those companies that you have accounts with. I mean, I, I cannot stand when it's misdirected rage. It's, it's not... It's not being directed where it needs to be. It's going on deaf ears. All you're doing is venting to somebody who could give two shits. And quite honestly, in this day and age, 
it could be packing and get upset and feel threatened by a big trucker and you might end up not making your load or making your way back home unless it's in a box so I, I don't think that it should be something that's confrontational um, truckers have a tough job we see it all the time and they're fighting with each other because the truck drivers are not unfortunately educated the way they were 15 20 years ago um, and not all of them there's a lot of good ones out there you know we're on the road with them all the time and we, we have good luck with some others I just shake my head like what is that guy doing you know especially in Florida in the fast lane getting off at his exit from the fast lane I mean we see that crap all the time driving in the fast lane yeah driving in the fast lane slow under the speed limit even though it says <laughs> no trucks in the left lane that's so anyway so um, I didn't want to really rant about that but so we don't want to necessarily stop at a truck stop there is two truck stops that are close to where we need to go we'll see this is a little tight turn here getting ready to leave tropical palms Kiss Kissimmee Florida we had a good stay great park I'll pick it up whenever uh, we get on the road so we're on route uh, police reported I ahead oops we're on I-4 I think it's I-4 or whatever 4 nonetheless this is a road that we didn't want to take but the best route to where we're going so um, I guess we got a bunch of popos up here so I'm gonna put the camera down so we're just trying to find a spot for the night we didn't want to get all extravagant on a campsite and all that we have to be at Camping World which is behind us uh, at 8 30 in the morning so obviously we don't want to get up early and drive a couple hours so I think Michael says that we're gonna be at McDonald's or something so this is like there's this is like a small exit of just gas stations and, and McDonald's and stuff so we'll pick it up well we're right down the street from Camping World um, I knew about this place from previous stays you can see Heidi's walking up there this McDonald's is open 24 hours. Now there's a Burger King across the street that's got bus parking in that, but I don't believe they're open 24 hours. There's really no place for us to go. Um, there's a Shell gas station. It was too tight, had a Duncan in there, but I knew about this McDonald's and I don't know if they're gonna let us stay the night here, but it would be pretty ideal. Um, these are trucker lanes. That's why they're designed the way that they are. Um, I'm far enough forward that actually a truck could get behind us, you know, no problem. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to stay. I mean, this uh, this is ideal for us, uh, definitely. You can see a little area here that's kind of private, so we could put out our our slide, our one slide. We want to be able to put out our bed slide, though. I mean, I, that's risking it because if a driver comes in, you know, he's going to be trying to uh, navigate this corner. And of course, the cab of the truck, you know, the truck, the actual truck, not the trailer, um, it would be over this white line trying to get its trailer around this sharp bend. So there's literally an RV place right here. I don't know. Maybe we'll check into that. Remember, let me show you guys. I'm assuming that they're full because everything's full and I'm assuming that for the night they would probably want $50 um, or more even though it's just for the night all right we'll see what Heidi says and make a determination there I told her to make sure you let them know that we'll definitely be patronizing the store <laughs> obviously oh hey that trucker wants to talk he wants to talk. Well, traffic wasn't too bad on I-4. I don't know what Heidi showed you on the camera there, but anyways, here she comes back with the verdict. So that's cool. Heidi's going to pull her car here. Um, they were clear. They said as long as it's one night, and that's exactly what we're going to do, just one night. So we had fans running all night uh, of these Max Air fans, and as expected, with the solar doing a good job, um, yesterday because we got here around 2 I guess 
anyways we're at 93 percent of the 200 amp hour battery which is pretty good so yeah we ran these fans i don't know we ran all three of them on high for a while and then we ran two of them on medium and then uh, this one on high in the bathroom so we we had a combination of all and it got kind of chilly last night so we knew we didn't have to run the air and we had the one on the bedroom for oh i don't know how long um well all night long so now what do i got to do uh bring this slide in and that uses a lot of power believe it or not so we put the bedroom slide out briefly to get some clothes put it back in and then this slide here I figured i'd show you guys this i don't get to see this normally usually i'm outside watching when it comes in Heidi's inside, she watches. And almost there. And that is it. So again, you can see, we look through the window, we can see the cabinet door down there. Um, and if it's open, so we're good here shut off the lights and head out of town just go down the street see what's going on there well here we are under the big flag at Camping World in Dover Florida 830 is our appointment what they didn't tell us was that it was going to be lines of RVs waiting to get in today so I'm not sure exactly why they have a appointment set up which is kind of odd uh, why don't they stagger it? Why didn't they tell the motorhome to come in at 8.30? And they tell the lacrosse to come in at 9. And they tell the gray wolf to come in at 9.45. And the next one to come in at 10. And then us at 11. So the rig gets dropped. And then I park the truck because we have a car. <laughs> so I don't have to drive the truck around and the car around. And uh, in the meantime, technician needs to see some video we shot of what we were experiencing. So that's what we're waiting for right now. We dropped it off, uh, talked to the technician, explained to him what's going on, which again, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, it's under a uh, warranty. Uh, again, Rockwood bending over backwards to make sure that they take care of their units. They definitely want it. You know, they've been telling us to drag this thing in here for the last couple months saying, hey, you need to get, go get that looked at. You need to go get it looked at. They've held true to wanting to fix it this whole time. Um, I w it's surprisingly quicker than I thought it was going to be. So we went ahead and had dinner here, or lunch, Lakeside Grill. Now, we didn't expect to eat, uh, but actually what I typed in was Lake park near me and if you're at camper world camping world there in dover getting work done this is a nice place to come to as you can see you've got uh, kayak rentals i think you can do a paddle boat thing possibly anyways you can launch your boat here of course fishing they got bait here they got lures now this is a strange thing i want you to read the sign that we just went past there and Heidi was asking me, and I knew the answer, but she said, that seems stupid. And I said, well, I guess so. This area here, she said, why are all these pool noodles here? Why is this all, you know, done up here? Look at that big fish right there. I don't know if you can see that. That's crazy, huh? Anyways, she said, why is this all roped off? I said, for swimming. I said, it's a beach, you can go swimming here. And she goes, no. She goes, you're not supposed to swim in dark water anywhere in Florida. I said, well, I'm just telling you that's what it is. And uh, we asked the lady, I said, what, what's the deal with this area? And she goes, yep, it's for swimming. And then Heidi said, isn't there alligators in there? She goes, yes, there is. And then just in 2022, there was a alligator attack out here. Somebody was out there swimming, not here, but out in the water somewhere. So that's kind of funny. There's another fish, he's kind of, getting the scum off of the water it looks like there you can see it right in the middle of the screen it's pretty good size but it is Florida oh, there's another one real close to these pool noodles you can see them here 
again that's expected i mean it is florida so but it's a beautiful lake it's thonto let's see thono thono to sasa <laughs> something like that thonota sasa thonota sasa thonota sasa uh, the indoor eating or you can see outdoor eating here it's just it's very nice it's very peaceful and whenever I had typed in that you know information to get here uh, the waitress who I think owns the place uh, she's had a lot of questions for us as far as oh you guys never been here oh that's great you know how, how'd you decide to come here and I said well it was a you know just google search i just put lake park near me and the restaurant came up and she said great she said you know get more visitors in here she goes my advertising is working you know and i'm kind of putting this video out here just to let you know that this place is close to uh dover camping world dover florida so again if you're getting work done there and they say hey come back in about three hours or so I, we told her we weren't real hungry, and she says, you don't have to eat. She goes, you you can just sit here if you want. Um, and it's very nice. It's just pleasant. Just a, a nice, cool day. I think it's a 78, I think, right now. Uh, might be in the 80s. I, I can't tell with this breeze, but what a uh, cool-looking place to hang out at. I do love Florida in the winter. So we're in Plant City. We've been uh, on the road for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. We're getting ready to get on I-4. And uh, we just drove by, not kidding, 15 strawberry fields. And they were loaded with strawberries. Well, at least they look like it anyway. So we're about... Uh, we're actually less than five miles from uh, Thousand Trails Claremont, which is considered Thousand Trails Orlando, which is in Claremont. Uh, actually, it says turn in 4.1 miles. The traffic's kind of heavy here on 27, um, but it's not too bad. It's better than four. Um, everybody's paying attention and moving like they should probably because they're trying to get home. Because it is rush hour. So we're at um, check in here at the gate. The security guard is going to tell Michael where to go for the night because um, we're not going to be able to check in. Uh, this is as far as I know. This is what I was told at 4.30. Uh, we'll get it. They'll send us to a pull through site and tomorrow morning by 10 o'clock we have to be in our site. Uh, our pick site obviously not the one we're going to tonight so hopefully we find out where the kids and families are or the I should say the families are that way we'll stay away from them because you know we don't have any kids so there's no sense of being with a bunch of screaming kids obviously having a good time so, it looks uh, pretty packed from what I can see. I don't remember seeing RVs up that close. I thought that was storage. <laughs> well, it might have been storage back, uh, I believe it was 2020. I know oh, we weren't here last year. So... Michael's obviously chit-chatting it up why there's 10 people in line maybe 20 by now okay. yes okay. thank you uh -huh. turn left on core road all right I gotta figure out how to shut this off Um, there's like not pull-through sites to where we can park for the night 
but there's some buddy sites down here that are open uh, that we can park for the night and then we get to play the Russian roulette tomorrow morning by 10. Holy cow. Yeah, when we were here in 2020, it wasn't this packed. I mean, it was busy, but of course it was 2020. Huh? That was two years ago. So this is where we're going to set up for the night. This, these are buddy sites. Um, they're, they're pretty tight. <laughs> but they're good for overnighters. So that's probably what they meant by pull-through sites. She just wasn't totally clear as to where. Well, he said I could go to the rest. Center. Then you have to go back into the park and... Right. So, 